Hey, beautiful people. So this is part two. So also, you have to know the water purification cleans you and sanctifies you. And so does the blood of Christ. The blood of Christ makes you blameless and without blemish, right? Now, 1 Peter 1 and 19. But with the blood, with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. You can use this as well. The water and he didn't come by the bl the blood only. When Christ was pierced through his side, water and blood came out of his side. 1 John 5 and 6. The water that came out of blood's cry out of the side of Christ was pure water, water of purification. 1 John 5 and 6. This is he that came by water and blood, even Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit that bears witness because the spirit is truth. Okay. So even when you're washing, you can say, Father, anoint my tap with 1 Peter 1 and 19 for the precious blood of Christ to flow through it. And Hebrews 10 and 22, pure water. Because he didn't come only by water. The water is water purification to purify you. The blood is that makes you without blameless and without spot, without sin before God. All right. But the precious blood of Christ as of the lamb without blemish and without spot. Now, 2 Peter 3 and 14. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things... Be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. All right? But Philippians 2 and 15, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke. So the blood of Christ makes you sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom you shine as lights in the world. That's why he said to be holy and set apart. He severed you from among the people because you shine as light among this perverse, this crooked and perverse nation. Now, we're going to talk about when Christ washed the foot of the apostles and why we should wash one another's feet. All right? John, and that when... People are not clean. They will betray you and they will hurt you. So that's why God says he made a difference between the clean and the unclean. If you're clean, you should be separated from the unclean. Now, John 13 and 8, Peter says unto him, Thou shall never wash my feet. Christ answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. He needed to be clean. Peter didn't understand what he was saying, but Christ knew what he was doing. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Now what did Christ say to him? Christ said to him, He that is washed needs not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. So when you wash your feet, you're clean every whit. And you are clean, but not all. So Christ was talking about Judas. Not all of them were clean. All right? The one who betrayed him. So you have to know people who are not clean in their heart. On You know, your heart. Let's go back up. Judas wasn't pure in his heart. Let us draw near with a true heart. His heart wasn't true to Christ. In full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. Judas had an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. That is why Christ didn't wash his feet. Because he knew his conscience was not right. Now, Christ said to him, He that is washed needs not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. And ye are clean, but not all. So he was talking to the apostles. They were all clean except one. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore said he, ye are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet and had taken his garments and was set down again, he said unto them, know ye that I have done to you? Do you know what he's done to you? Do you understand the washing of the feet? Why he made them clean? You call me master and Lord 
and you say, well, for I am so, for, for so am I. If I then, your Lord and master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Why? Exodus 30 and 29. And thou shalt sanctify them. Christ was sanctifying them and making them holy and clean. That they might be most holy. Whatsoever touches them shall be holy. Christ washed their feet for what? Because he was already sanctified and holy for them to be holy so they can do the same to one another, to others. Now, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done. Exodus 30 and 29. And thou shalt sanctify them that they may be most holy whatsoever touches them shall be holy. Now God wants to talk to you about fornication. If any man's seed of complu compulation go out from him, if you don't know what compulation is, it's sexual intercourse, sex, intercourse, love making, making love. So his semen, his, his sperm coming out of him. If any man's seed of compu compulation goes out from him, then he shall wash all his flesh in water and be unclean until the evening. So when you have sex, you're unclean until the evening. And every garment, even your garments are unclean. And every skin whereon is the seed of compulation shall be washed with water and be unclean until the evening. The woman also with whom man shall lie with seed of compulation, they both shall, they shall both bathe themselves in water and be unclean until the evening. That's what God wanted me to read to you. And this is just about you being holy. He wants you to be holy, sanctified, and clean. And to pray with Ezekiel 36, chapter 36. And he wants you to read um, Ezekiel chapter 36. And to be cleaned by him with, uh, with Ezekiel 36 and 26. Ezekiel 36 and 25 and for you to read the chapter of Ezekiel 26. I hope this helped you beautiful people of God. You have a blessed Sabbath. May God, the most high God bless you and keep you forever. Amen.